Hi, we're now going to look at risk. We're going to look at the definition. We're going to break it down, but also we're going to look at how it affects objectives. So without further ado. So first thing is to break risk down. So in 31,000, risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. So objectives, clear there, also within the definition. It says that objectives can have different aspects and categories. So they could be financial, health and safety, security, etc. But also, it's important to know they can be applied at various levels. So whether that's the strategic, tactical, operational level, but also programs, tasks, projects, whatever it is, we will have various levels of objectives within the organization. And each of those objectives can be affected. So let's move on. That's the objectives there. That's the target that we're aiming for. The effect. So what effect? In 31,000, the standard says an effect is a deviation from the expected. It can be positive, negative, or both, and can address, create, or result in opportunities and threats. It's important to know there to fully understand, I should say, that that effect is positive or negative. There is an upside to risk. If we take, if we take, if we exploit, we take advantage, we take a punt, this is all opportunity management. So the definition of risk for 31,000 is opportunity management and threat management, but opportunities and threats are both risks. So we can see there risk, the effect of uncertainty on objectives. So the other main word in there is uncertainty. Uncertainty isn't really defined uh, within the standard, but what I've put on the screen there, we've got aleatory uncertainty, epistemic uncertainty, linguistic uncertainty, decision uncertainty. I'm sure there are many other types of uncertainties. But the two main ones I think it's important to differentiate between is aleatory and epistemic, or epistemic, epistemic, however you want to pronounce it. But aleatory uncertainty is that uncertainty that even if we dig deeper, we are probably not going to be any more clear as to what or how that instance will turn out. So like rolling a dice, we just really don't know, do we? Let's be completely honest about that. We can't work it out. Whereas epistemic or epistemic uncertainty is when if we would have dug a little bit deeper, if we would have looked at the facts of history or we got some current knowledge of what's going on from those people that matter, then that type of uncertainty, we will gain more clarification and understanding so then we can actually change what we're going to do about it. So that epistemic, epistemic uncertainty is a real important one. A lot of the time when I'm dealing with people and they say, oh no, we can't do that. because," And I ask the question, why? Because so-and-so said, or for whatever reason, but I will always ask, are you sure? Have we tried? Can we look a little bit deeper? Oh yeah, we could. So we're saying things can't be done because they're uncertain, but actually, if we look a little bit deeper, they can. And that really is one of the biggest things in risk management, isn't it? It is the right information, getting it from wherever we can, from the right people. So there we have the risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives, where we've looked at objectives, we looked at the effect, and we've looked at that uncertainty. Linguistic uncertainty, very common in, in conversation. When you have a conversation with, with people and they may say, oh yeah, he's aged, or no, he's, he's old, what does old mean? There's uncertainty within that. So the way we speak, we often increase uncertainty, we bring uncertainty in. So again, I'm very simple in the way sort of I am with people and with myself. I always ask for clarification. Who, what, when, where, how, dig a little deeper. And then we are definitely, you know, understanding of epistemic, epistemic uncertainty, list, lifting that barrier. And decision uncertainty is basically the uncertainty of decisions. We can go a little bit deeper into it. But what I want you to know is the big difference between aleatory and epistemic, epistemic. 
And also what 31,000 tells us is risk is usually expressed in terms of risk sources, where the risk come from. So categories, types of risks, again, depending on what book you read, will give you potential different types, but health and safety risk, compliance risk, legal risk, security risk. So we know those sources and categories, types, it's really good to define them within our organization. Potential events, something that is going to happen or has happened, consequences and their likelihood, which is usually where, the most, where most people see risk being. It's the consequence of something and the likelihood of something. Realistically, I fully agree with that. We're thinking about something because we want to know, is it going to happen or is it, is it not going to happen? But also, what is going to happen? What is the severity, severity of it or likelihood? Because remember, this can be positive as well. Moving on to the next slide, what I'm going to try and do now is apply that context wrong, apply sort of that, that statement, that definition of risk to an actual objective. So let's look at that. So on the screen there, we've got the objective. We can see the timeline across the bottom. So this is, I've set this up to sort of look at sort of project risk management, right? But we always need a plan. We always need a plan A, B, C sometimes, but let's have a look. So project risk management, project over time. So I'm just going to put the phases in or the general phases of a project. So business case, we start off with the business case. Are we going to do the project? Yes or no. We end up with a complete project, hopefully. In between there, we have project startup. Then we're going to have the various steps, phases or stages of that project or task. Let's call it one, two, three and four. So as we, as we look at that as a high level overview here, business case, is it worth doing? Yes, it is. Let's start. Project startup, you get in your people, equipment, the materials, your tasks, your plans, you're building all of this. Then you're going into the stages of the project. You will potentially or hopefully have stage boundaries because before every stage starts, you will review the risks, the opportunities, the threats. You will see what's going on, the issues before you move to the next stage. So that there from business case to project complete is a high level overview. So we've set that objective. The effect of uncertainty on objectives, let's have a look at that. So in the, in the slide here, we've gone along, we've come to stage three and then we've hit, the, we've hit a risk. Now this could be, and this could be positive or negative. It looks negative there, but what it does, it's a deviation from the expected. Remembering that is one of the definitions. So the effect of uncertainty on objectives, an effect is a deviation, positive or negative. So what we're showing there, we've hit one of those deviations, could be positive, could be negative. I'm not going to say which, it is either or, but it is now set us off on a tangent away from the objective. It could be, if it's positive, we're going to change our objective slightly. But what we need risk management to do is either way, we need to get back on to our objectives. So hopefully by, if the big three, the principles, the process, wrong the principles, the framework and the process are applied, we should be able to realign our trajectory with our objective. So what actually impacts that is the big three. So the big three, the principles, the framework and the process. When we look through the principles there, if we had applied, if we've embedded risk management into our project, then ultimately we're going to create value and we're going to protect what we're doing. So look at the principles there. There are eight of them integrated. Is risk management integrated throughout the organization? Is it structured and comprehensive? If we structure our risk management, then we're going to get repeatable results. Is it customized? So is it applicable to the project? It's like PRINS2, we tailor it to the environment. Is it inclusive? Inclusive of who? Well, have we got the right people involved at the right time? Do we have the right stakeholders, the right subject matter experts? Uh, dynamic, again, it's gotta be responses. responsive. Risks can change, emerge and disappear at any time during any project. So we want risk management to be dynamic. 
based on best available information. That's historical information, current information, and future information. That's what we need. Again, one of the principles here, it is principle six. Seven, it's got to take into consideration the human and cultural factors that are involved in the project. We must, we must, we must remember that people are different. So we must take that into consideration. And always, it should be continued improvement. When we move across then to the risk management framework, that is what we would have designed and built surrounding our project, surrounding our organization, surrounding our task. So the risk management framework, which has got six areas with leadership and commitment in the middle, integration. Again, when we're building the framework, we want to integrate it across the organization. When we are designing the framework, we look at things like this. Do we undertake projects? Yes. What is our operations? What are the strategic objectives of the organization? How are the functions set up internally? Because we have to design the framework for risk management about the significant activities and functions, including decision making within the organization. Once we implement it, we've got to evaluate how well is this doing? Very similar to PDCA and again, improvement, as is mentioned there in the principles. We've also got one of the big three, one of the most important ones is the risk management process. There's six elements to this where we look at the scope, the context and the criteria. So for this project, what is the scope? How big is it? How small is it? Where does it overact? What's not counted in it? The scope, the context, again, what type of project is it? We look at the internal context, the external context and the risk management context. And then the criteria, the risk, the risk criteria, again, very important. We need the right people identifying them at the right time, which is massive for communication and consultation. We need that. We undertake the risk assessment, which includes identification, analysis and evaluation. We apply any risk treatment. Again, that could be exploiting risk. And then we, re we, must, we must also record and report on what we're doing and monitor and review. So that is it. We have looked at there. We've applied the, uh, and hopefully then that last little, that bit of movement on the screen there, we should, if we apply risk management, we should get back on our trajectory to reach our objective. So I think that's a good screen for me. Again, I'm very visual. It gives me an overview there of how the big three are inward looking and outward looking, but they encapsulate any projects that we've got. In this case, project risk management. So that's it. Um, 15 minutes longer than I wanted to do, but risk, the definition breakdown and how it affects objectives. Thanks for watching.